As people keep joining, just to make sure it's sound working for everyone. Sound is working, Richie. Hello, Good. everyone. We will wait a few more moments for folks to arrive. We're trying a new format today. All right, Amy, do you think we got enough to get started? 21. Yeah, 21. Honestly, that's as good as we're going to get. So, like, yeah. Roll. Awesome. All right. Welcome, everyone. Today is Tuesday, December 5th. You've made it to the meeting, so you're familiar with the logistics and the LF antitrust policy notice. If you're not, please take a look at the slide deck that went out on the mailing list. We have several TUC members present here today, um, but we are not making any voting decisions. Um, we're trying a new format. So TUC is going to talk a little bit about our current work, and then we're going to go into discussion and then Q&A with our tag leadership. All right, next slide. Um, so quick update from the TOC. Now that hopefully we've resolved any confusion associated with annual reviews, by the way, tags, if you do have some confusions or questions on these, do speak up during the discussions portion. Um, the TOC is going to be picking up any annual reviews that are not tag labeled. Um, that means if you go to the TOC project board and you click on annual reviews, anything that does not have a tag dash label associated with it, the TOC is going to be conducting the annual review for that. Um, there are several that we have already done that are complete and have been merged. Um, any projects that are falling less than 50% of what we kind of expect from a sandbox project will be opening an issue directly on those project repositories with our roadmap and kind of a little bit more of expectations for bringing them back into a good state of health. Um, any annual reviews with a tag label on them, we're still looking to the tags to have those completed. Um, there was a question on whether or not that could be extended due to contributor bandwidth availability in the impending holidays. So I believe we've made that available through January 1st to give folks a little bit more time. But if you do have any questions on that, reach out in the TOC channel or chat up your TOC liaison for your tag. Um, and then we also have three TOC members that are going to be providing direct feedback for project health review and automation. Amy, did we have who they are listed? I'm forgetting. Uh, we didn't, but it was Duffy and it was uh, Aaron and it was Justin. So. There you go. So if uh, tag leaders, if you have any feedback on project health review or automation, reach out to those individuals. I believe we've captured most of what's been discussed with the tags based on the November 16th meeting. Um, so those will be included in there. But as with all things in software development, we start with a few small changes and then we iterate and improve and move forward. So we're not going to get it all done at once. Um, Based off of our last discussion we had, um, we're still looking for feedback on a few different topic areas from the tags. Um, what's missing in the ecosystem that we're not covering, as well as what should the tags be focusing on, kind of a little bit more about the scope and the charter of the tags, as well as um, how they're engaging with projects, how they're providing information out to adopters or guidance. 
Um, so those discussions are over on the TOC repo. And then December 12th is a sandbox applications review meeting for the TOC. So tag members, if you have a moment, please take a look through the ones that are in the upcoming queue and provide any comments, feedback, insight based off of your knowledge, experience, and any presentations associated with that um, particular project that certainly helps the TOC in our decision making for acceptance. Uh, any questions, comments, feedback, additions to the TOC update? All right, let's move on to TOC and tech tag discussion. Um, so during our KubeCon TOC tag meeting, and there was a proposal to shift how we're doing our monthly tag updates to be more discussion oriented. Um, so we threw together the slide deck. I've already gone through with the pre-reads on all the tags. So you'll have comments on your slide. TUC members I know are also still providing comments on some of that. So please take a moment um, to respond to those questions. But in the interim, I wanted to kind of open this up to discussion for folks. What tag supports projects related to messaging and databases? We can certainly start there. Tag storage, how do you all feel? I created hey. this. I was hoping the tag storage would, would say yeah. yes. It's yes, yeah, so um, hi, this is Xing. I love the tag storage chair. Uh, so yeah, I think this should be uh, part of tag storage. We already have Provega in tag storage, uh, which uh, provides uh, storage systems to support streams. They actually published a blog comparing uh, Provega with uh, Kafka. So I think this, uh, let's see what is this, uh, the project name. Uh, stream, uh, Streamsy, okay. yeah. So this should be this operator to support Kafka. Yeah, should be uh, should be part of tag storage. Good. So anything has to do with data, right? Um, so that's uh, for streaming. That should be part of tag storage uh, databases, right? We also have we have Vitas uh, supports uh, horizontally scale MySQL. We have been talking to uh, Cloud Native PG, which supports providing operator for uh, PostgreSQL databases running Kubernetes. So any projects that has to do with data, I think that should be part of the tech storage. There are also uh, a few uh, projects for key value pairs that are already part of tech storage. Okay. That sounds to be like we need to um, make sure that we have those well documented for tag storage because um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming the right. question came up because it's not immediately clear for a lot of sure, community members. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, so we probably should be doing that, maybe um, update our readme section for our Potentially. tag storage page. Yep. Okay, yeah, let's do, I will do that. Yeah, we do have start with part. that. We we have a we have those projects listed there, but it's just we don't really have categories to describe what they are, so it's not clear. Yeah, this was an open question that we had um, during the KubeCon meeting: is the kind of the subdomains of each of the tags, um, starting to document what those are, checking in with your liaisons, ensuring that they make sense and that they align. Um, Josh, you had your hand raised. I'm curious what your thoughts are here. Yeah, um, one of the things that's about to come up for the tag storage, for tag storage, um, because of what's in the sandbox queue, is needing to come up with some sort of working rules to define what is a cloud native database and what is not. Mm, um, okay. Because there's a project in the sandbox queue that is a database that is certainly usable in a cloud native context, but it's also quite usable outside of a cloud native context. Uh -huh. oh, okay. And and tag storage is going to need to start, you know, decide, you know, because need to decide when when is it that we say no to a new database that wants to be a CN, part in the CNCF because it's I not see. cloud native. Um, okay. So okay. Yeah. So that's something we should work on. 
Okay, so yeah, I will pin you offline as well just to talk about this and uh, talk to other tech leads. Alex? That's a point. Hi, I'm sorry, I was late joining the discussion. Um, on on the concept of um, on the concept of what's included um, as part of the work that's going into the landscape version two, we should probably also make sure that those projects are appropriately tagged um, that way too, and it kind of gives people a bit of guidance. Um, I do have a bit of a um, a similar. Uh, comments around things like databases when it comes to um, cloud native that Josh mentioned, right? We, there are, there's obviously, you know, things like etcd and TIKV and things like that, which are built for cloud native and designed specifically for cloud native. Um, but I think we should also consider um, sort of things like cloud native operators and things like that. And 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 that was something that's not um, that's something that's not often clear and often has been debated as to whether operators count as a project. And in many cases, the operators actually make something that's not cloud native, cloud native. So maybe they should be considered as a project, but it's a bit of a gray line. Yeah, but that's something that we've talked about in the past. Um, Katie, I see your comment in Slack. That was something that we had talked about um, in the TOC tag offsite was defining the scope, the domains, tools that fall underneath of each of the tag categories. Um, so it's still work that needs to be done probably moving forward through the net, through um, into the new year. Justin Cormack, I know you had your hand up. Yeah, sorry, I was just writing in the note, but I mean, I think, yeah, it, I think we do consider the, the cloud native projects and appropriate and in scope, but it's just we're not sure if they're sustainable as standalone projects as a, you know, kind of standalone thing. But I think from this point of view of the scope of the tag, they're very much in scope and, 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 you know, they're an important part of how people use things. It's just a more of a question of viability as a, as a project, as a standalone project that's been the issue rather than in scope or out of scopeness. Other comments on this? We like the conversation has shifted a little bit into operators specifically. Uh, Matt, um, <laughs> sorry, um, uh, I'm not sure if now is the right time to talk about it. But as we're talking about how the landscape is divided into uh, tags and subcategories and uh, categories and subcategories and whatnot. Uh, I've been doing some work with the landscape data and uh, a lot of the reports that one might generate directly from it are somewhat potentially misleading depending on how the reports are generated. For example, uh, open telemetry is represented in the metadata uh, we've recently recognized by uh, a single project, the Java agent. Uh, Kubernetes is represented by just the Kubernetes repo, not all of the Kubernetes repos. So I've done some work to pull in data for each project for the entire org so that we can understand activity data uh, and community uh, community activity uh, it, that's inclusive of not just the repo that's reported in the CNCF, but um, you know all the helm charts and, and ancillary repos that are contained in the organization. So uh, I just highlighting that from, from an initial look at just the observability sector, but I'm, I'm doing this for the other sectors because it's just a for loop with the same reports. Um, you know, I, I think there might be a mismatch. So anything that's like aggregating stars for a project or number of commits, you know, it may or may not, depending on if it's coming from dev stats or coming from ad hoc reports that use the landscape data directly as published uh, without sort of adding in all the rest, um, you know, we should shore that up to inform our discussions moving forward. That's, that's the only thing I wanted to raise. Okay. And, and I'll have an update in a, in a week or two. Um, uh, there's some work I'm um, putting my stuff in, uh, in, in in the landscape graph repo and in some notebooks, but um, those are my initial findings from the weekend. Okay, thank you. Um, I wanna kind of circle back to tag scoping and subdomains. Um, 
from tag leadership based off of what your current capacity is and your availability, is this something that you all feel you can do before February, having an initial draft of that scope and subdomain area for each of the tags? I think I saw head nods. I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alex. It's not unreasonable in my opinion uh, for okay. our group. Okay. That, that will certainly help. Um, lead into discussions. Yes, exactly. For February 6th. <laughs> Thank you, um, Amy. Uh, Matt? As a quick follow on, did we ever like formally settle, or I, I assume it's still an open issue around whether we we want to, as, as I think, keep the number of tags from growing too much so that we don't, you know, further divide resourcing, but have some way to uh, indicate when projects or working groups or or extremes or, or what, what have you uh, are relevant to multiple tags. Um, is the the new landscape to Jason the right place to do that, which is sort of a superset of the older first version landscape data that we should be using some PRs to that repo? Or is do we want to like work things out in other places and then move things more formally to GitHub once there's consensus? I'm of the opinion we work things um out outside of GitHub. And then once we have consensus, we codify it there. Um, but I'm open to other opinions and feedback on it. Ideally, I'd like, like we have not set a cap on the amount of tags. Um, I think it's always been where there's momentum and interest and alignment. Um, that makes the most sense for having a tag there. That's how most of the tags initially got started. Um, but we're seeing a lot more requests come in, which is why we've been pushing and staffing. Yes, thank you, Josh, making sure that there are people available to serve in leadership positions to carry on that work. Um, I think the other challenge that comes in is when we have some of these requests, we've been pushing them back into the working groups to try to make sure that they have um, the appropriate resources available for them to get started as a tag, to get started as a working group, to get familiar with the reporting process, with the leadership, with doing deliverables, reporting, roadmap planning, those kinds of things. Um, so what we've been pushing for in the TOC and any TOC member, please chime in and add additional color clarification and correction um, is to have a lot of these initiatives start as working groups sponsored by one or more tags. Um, that dual sponsorship by a tag is something that's new and we're trying it out. We don't know if it works. I'm hoping it does. Um, so, but from there, go ahead, Matt. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I, no, I'm sorry. I said, I said, we'll see. With, we have multiple instances of that that I'm excited to, to see develop. The AI one yep. and others. Yeah, exactly the same. But the next question is, once those working groups have been executing and um, are working successfully through deliverables, engaging with projects, things of that nature. What are the next steps to promote them to a tag if that's the route that we want to go? Or in some cases, it may be that the activity dies off because it's only a limited time kind of sense of urgency on providing any kind of information, guidance, instruction to projects or adopters. Um, how How is this currently working for you all that have multiple working groups? I know tag app delivery has a very large scope. They seem to have a new working group um, almost every couple of months for yet another thing that's showing up, which just shows the growing need in that ecosystem. So Josh, I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to you for your question. There's definitely room. I mean, even looking at like the platforms paper where we listed out capability types, which I think actually spreads across all of the the tags so it wouldn't be fair to say all of the capabilities in a platform should go into app delivery it's literally our whole organization here um but we do have we did form the platforms group a couple of years ago and the artifacts group about six months ago artifacts has been it's been interesting to watch it grow and it's it's getting to critical mass um this last one, so this has been a, a top, I just wanted to raise it so people are aware that the discussion is happening. To Josh Berkus's point, you know, it hasn't gone further, mainly because of resource constraints in, in tag app delivery. And so I just wanted to surface it to the talk. We we talked about maybe opening an issue in the talk repo, uh, but we haven't. So here's just me putting it up here. Uh, there was a group that came and presented to you all a few months ago about API enhancement proposals, essentially API standards and common patterns um, that, that folks could adopt. And uh, they came back to us and we recommended they consider forming a working group. 
um, and bringing in related projects that, you know, try to put some structure around APIs and, you know, uh, establish some standards and synergies. Um, they did propose that. That's number 448, which I linked here. Um, but it's it's kind of died in committee <laughs> at this point because we really, uh, we, we weren't confident that we could support them uh, within tag app delivery. Um, maybe we can. I'm not, I'm not saying we absolutely can. It's just where the conversation has been so far. Um, I brought it up particularly now because API Curio or API Curio, however you want to read that, um, just submitted themselves to Sandbox. Um, that's also why I asked about messaging because API Curio is also a little bit associated with Kafka and Streamzy because um, people store their Kafka schemas in there. Um, yeah, but I just wanted to to bring this up. I, I don't know that I'm actually asking for anything, but just, just to let you know that there's been that conversation. Okay. Josh Berkus, I know you had your hand raised. Yeah. I mean, one sort of open question for the TOC here is um, what happens with projects that don't fall current within any current tag scope, right? Um, because like this is an example and, and actually the API thing is a good example because there isn't a clear working group for it in app delivery because, or networking, which would be the other place you could stick APIs, um, because there aren't people to run that working group, um, but it is kind of a distinct area of functionality. And, and actually the, um, there's a couple of projects currently in the sandbox queue that are basically API management, um, clearly within the domain of cloud native, but, but, you know, sort of what happens to those projects? Does the TOC pick up anything we don't have a tag for? Um, do we try to shoehorn them in somewhere where the tag's not really prepared to cover them? How do we handle this? In the past, from my experience, it's the shoehorning problem is we try to identify a primary tag that that project can align most closely with, knowing full well that there is definitely overlap with others. Um, but that's how we've done it previously. Other TOC members who have been on the talk for a long period of time, have you seen this play out? Or is this a new challenge that we have to face? Justin? Yeah, I think... I mean, we sometimes we try to allocate them to things, even if it's not a perfect match. Um, tag app delivery as a kind of, and things like that, like as a kind of fallback. But I think that, um, I, yeah, I think we so we usually kind of either because we haven't actually a lot of the time we we ended up without an official list of which projects were attached to which thing. I think we lost some of them, you know, and kind of forgot. And now we're trying to make them more formally attached again. We're having to do the work that we have. Oh, yeah, they don't fit again. So I think we need to we need to come up with a list of ones we don't think fit and have a discussion about it and understand where they fit better and look at what where we put them in the landscape and where we've where they might go and where and maybe talk to the projects about where they feel they go and see if we need some new tags to go with them as well. Or or maybe we can attach them to working groups for that as a new model or something. That's also an option. It still runs into the staffing issue of making sure that there's leadership to be able to facilitate that engagement and discussion. Um, but I, I recall us talking in the past about having the project select which tag they're homed underneath of. How do the tags feel about this? You all are the one that are experiencing either the joys or the pains of that kind of alignment. Alex? I, I, I think if we're, um, I, I think a tag needs to be accountable um, for purposes of, you know, reviews and graduation processes and all of that kind of stuff. But I also think that we could have sort of a primary tag and maybe like secondary tags allocated where where there isn't where, where there is some overlap like like for example i think when harbor went through graduation we had a similar sort of thing where you know there was either runtime or app delivery or was owning it but storage got involved because there were there was a lot of replicated storage components to it um uh so i think i think that kind of works too um, where we where, where we can kind of have um, some shared responsibility, but ultimately one tag should own it. Okay. 
So we've observed and discussed the problem space a lot. We have some recommendations, solutions. Is there anyone that's interested in actually putting together a proposal so that we can make progress on this? Are we talking about the proposal on how we allocate projects to tanks? Yep. I can give it a go and work with somebody else if other people are interested. I was saying I'm happy to contribute, but my plate's full to drive uh, to drive it. Uh, you, you know, as as a racy a. <laughs> um, uh, however, I, some of the data that I've been working up for both the observability ecosystem as well as the whole CNCF, I think, as I said, could inform that. And I'm happy to I'm happy to prep that and, and contribute. Yeah, I'd like Gosh. to help from you know from the perspective of what goes into a platform. I'm kind of curious how uh how our landscape will 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 kind of map to that. So yeah, I'd I'm, I'd like to help out. All right. So Alex, I am seeing Ricardo, Matt, Josh Gavant, uh, Leo in chat, uh, Karina, Max, I see your comments on focusing on the surrounding topics, but not necessarily a specific domain. Maybe it would make sense to have a caretaker tag with corresponding working group for each domain. That's also an option I would recommend working with Alex uh, to include some flavor or optionality of that within the proposal to move forward with. Sounds good. Do we want to try and set a date for this? I mean, yeah. there's that February 6th piece out there. I was also going to suggest um, starting a discussion over in the TOC repo, because that way we can track it and basically put this back on like the agenda for yeah that meeting on, on the 6th of February. I know it seems both very far away and very short. Yep. That'll also allow you to direct any of your community members of the tags over to that discussion if they have an opinion or also would like to participate and contribute to that proposal. Good suggestion, Amy. Thank you. Um, Alex, given that you're now the lead for this, um, do you have an ideal date in mind? Is February 6th good or is that a little too soon? It's a good date as any to target. All right. So folks that are interested in this discussion on alignment of projects with tags, primary, secondary, and surrounding topic areas, check out the TOC discussions part of our repo. Alex is going to be initiating a conversation there. And for those that are interested, do please chime in on that discussion topic there. Excellent. Other topics, concerns, questions, consideration, feedback, anything else we want to talk about today? All right. Tags and TOC members. We'll start with the tag chairs first. How do you think this went? Asynchronous updates, TOC comments, and then an actual discussion. I think it's great that we're having these discussions as opposed to not having them before. So this is a big step in the right direction. All right. Josh Gavant and then Matt, I saw you both come off mute. Uh, I just was going to say I was happy to be able to bubble these up and have the discussion, so thank you. Mm -hmm. It's a welcome change. Okay. Josh Berkus. I think if we're going to stick to the asynchronous, we should use a format other than a slideshow. Um, okay. Uh, what because, would you recommend? Um, I either document or GitHub discussion. Amy, how do you feel about either a doc or a discussion on that? I was actually thinking something even worse. An email back into the TOC list talking about what you all are doing. That works too. I mean, I'm sort of like, I want to be able to have like the widest amount of surface area for people to be able to come see like what all you're doing and how to be able to get involved. Um, we haven't yet gotten to the point where like the discussions are really taking off over on GitHub. So I'm kind of like I'm balancing between like I don't want it to go into a document and die. <laughs> um, and we can change things up as far as like 
there's not a ton, I think, that's really visual about the slide deck. Right? Like, it's usually mostly text. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that the only thing I worry about email is mm -hmm. that it's harder to change it. Like, for instance, uh, when I updated the Tech Network slides, I can tag, you know, my co chair see if they comment, and I don't know if they will have time to comment. So at least I offer them an opportunity, a window to comment. Um, so with email, I guess <laughs> we just have it's to time feature, it to maybe basically. send it to the last minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that's actually, that is a good thought. Um, That leads me kind of back over towards being able to do like a discussion and we can do a discussion that then kicks off with like, okay, here's your updates for, um, we're not going to do one for January because at this point, like it's January 2nd and there's, there's like, no one's back in yet. Um, But I think we can kick off like a discussion for the February 6th conversation for here's the tag updates. Um. And if we do that, we should also drop the slides. Yeah, I, I think the consensus is around dropping the slides. It's just okay. a matter that of cool. how do we how do we want to send the information out? Um, I will add here that I have learned and I've probably mentioned this a few times with folks that maintainers don't always check out what's on our repos, but they do read the TOC mailing list. So if we're trying to make maintainers more aware of some of the work that the tags are doing, maybe sending messaging out on the mailing list for those updates would get more eyes on that work um, and potentially drive more interest of projects back into the tags for closer collaboration, especially around things like APIs and their frameworks. How do folks feel about that? And then we can leave the TOC repo discussions for the specific working things out, such as the tag domain alignment conversation. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, okay. I'm thinking, you know, for the tag updates, right, we can send out emails. But for any issues associated with, you know, um, you know any tags, I think uh, either, uh, you know, um, TOC, uh, an issue, I think, is also good. We have issues to track those, right? And then people can give different inputs, and that's also tracked. Um, that's my that's my thought. Yeah. Any any issues that come up with the tags where you need your liaisons? Um, if it's pressing, obviously reach out to them. Slack, DM, email. Um, but other other than that, an issue on the TOC repo should be enough as long as you're tagging your liaisons, um, so that we can see it. Uh, Katie, you had a question. Can we have the updates in the form of a newsletter once a month? So I was Sound actually going to go a different direction with that. Um, so you know how I have like the, here's our agenda for tomorrow email that goes out. Just respond to that email with your updates when you are ready. And if you don't come by and get like your updates, I will come find you. That seems like a really low key way to be able to like, here's the updates. Here's what's going on. And like, there's one place to be able to make like a home for it. Thoughts and opinions? Yes. What kind of format uh, will we, is, is it the same format as the slides or, or yet to be determined? I mean, it's an email. What do you want to put in an email? <laughs> Anything, I guess. Right. <laughs> I'd yeah. still like to have a place for people to collaborate on that before responding because there are multiple chairs. So if I'm sending out an email, um, then I maybe will get a chance for other chairs to come in right so yeah if we have like maybe a github star with a github issue or maybe put that on the github discussion somewhere and then reply with that link or i just thought there was, should be like a draft in place for multiple people to collaborate before that thing to be shared with the community yeah i think that's a good point I think you know you can uh, you know coordinate between these the tag the tag chairs you know maybe that can be through a slide or Google Doc or whatever people can give comments right and then after you sort it out finalize that and then you can send it out uh, an email uh, mm -hmm. to wider audience you can even in the email you can attach the slides. So, uh, yeah. Katie and then Richie. So the only reason I came up with the newsletter term is because I think it's very important for us to have consistency in, in updates. So for example, these are 
the things we've completed, these are the things we're looking at, like very similar to, to the slides, because the more consistent we're going to share this information between the tags, the easier it is to digest for other people and to understand where exactly to look at. Um, so I think this is where I think perhaps we need to decide on a format as well and kind of make it as consistent as possible in terms of the areas we would like to cover and to see updates from the tags. So. You know, the right. Kubernetes weekly, like last week in Kubernetes development, maybe we should, I mean, maybe let's not do every week, but maybe we should have a monthly and somebody just brings everything together. Similar. I'm afraid to say that because of my volunteering for that. So, but it's a great idea. This. I think it. Sorry. No, no, no. Let's do this. So, because, like, again, we're changing a lot of things. We've already just changed, like, the slide format. Use the slide format. Like, respond back into the email with, like, how we've actually got like this this like kind of running together. Um, keep keep like the, the normal slide format of what we currently have. Um, then respond to the email when you're ready. Like each tag collaborates with themselves. Um, like the uh, like Karina's suggestion about like each tag works through like the process in here. Work through the slide, and then when you're ready, go ahead and send it out. And if by this meeting, um, or like this time of the meeting, if I don't see your updates, we might have questions here about like, hey, where are your updates? What happened? Can we help? Mm -hmm. That seems like a lightweight way to be able to move us forward into February. Not necessarily like it's not going to be always like this, but let's just try it. Yeah, so we're not necessarily changing the content um, of the updates. We're just changing the mechanism in which they're being shared. That way, smaller tweaks, iterating changes over time. And then if that works and we like it and we're getting good feedback, then we can look at adjusting the content to make it more seamless, easy, approachable for anybody on the mailing list. Does that work? Look at us being all agile. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Somebody want to take a shot at doing that from today's deck? I might. I'll share it on tag chairs if I do. Okay. Anything else? So it sounds like this went well. Uh, let me recap what Ricardo's put in chat place uh, each of the tags will figure out a place to collaborate amongst the tag leadership to consolidate content for those updates and then the updates once they're finalized amongst the tag chair um, they'll send out uh, those updates on the TOC mailing list once Amy kicks off the here's what's coming tomorrow email Sound do you expect right? us to send it before the meeting? Uh, what's the timeline? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah I do. Enough. I expect like it, okay. it's the same kind of thing where like the slides need to be done before we get into the meeting. Um, Got it. And <laughs> then like, yeah, like the yeah, I do expect them to be able to be here before the meeting because then we can talk about like, oh, so I saw the thing, like you know, like and lead, leads on to like another conversation. That's why. Yeah, that, that that's good for me to know because like I said, you know, my co-chair doesn't always respond. So sure. at least I know I'm just going to time it before the meeting where I send in case they respond, you know. Totally like fine. The night before, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Matt, you yeah, got your hand up. Um, yeah, but I think Richie had it, my his hand up before me and I don't know if it's still up or if I'm lagging. Did you no, it's fine. Um, what, what I wanted to say is, has basically been said, like, have a doc for all the tech leaderships amongst the techs themselves. And once they consider it final, just send it. And if it's not final, just send a follow up and done. Like, no need to be super process heavy around this. Yep, that's right. Uh, I agree. Um, I wanted to respond ever so briefly to your initial question about how this has gone today. Um, in, in, in my view, um, Briefly, I really, really enjoy having the unstructured time uh, to both hear other people talk and and how they how they how they form the things that are interesting to them and important. Um, and we also have a forum for things that don't quite belong without having to have a system for absolutely everything. As an example of sort of a non-standard interesting thing that I wanted to surface here <laughs> uh, to be to to get a two for one. Um, uh, last week in the tag observability meeting, we had a community member come out and say, hey, I think uh, accessibility is, is important and I'm an expert in that. So here's some things that we should all know about accessibility as we're building as many observability analysis tools have complex UIs. Um, you know, if, 
the, the hypothesis is that if we can ensure that things in the CNCF that are in that sector at least are able to describe in what ways they are uh, or, or or might someday be uh, accessible to people with various uh, uh, needs. Um, uh, you know, we, right now we don't really measure that, but we have other tags that are already looking at guidelines for all, all projects, right? And so we can we can connect, can, you know, this person to tech and treat strategy to get advice on that. So like that, there's no really clear issue type I could I could make or, or I could I could shoehorn one in, but I, I really like having this sort of just all hands, even if it's a, a, a cadence touch point where, where, where the things that don't belong in the odd ducks, which are oftentimes it might be the more interesting things anyway, um, uh, can 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 get some time yeah excellent feedback thank you and also good good uh segue over to tag contributor strategies um new work on the deaf of hard of hearing working group and improving accessibility for cloud native projects so definitely make that connection that would be fabulous um yeah the person and the person that came uh out and the video is posted now you, you can see it it's a it's a brief presentation but i think it's important and it might be the start of something like a working group um, yeah. you know, this is coming out of what, what they saw at KubeCon and, and what a lot of people were talking about, about that effort. So, um, plus one. Awesome. All right. Anything else? I have a question. Uh, if anybody has a question. So I, I was looking at the discussion in the TOC in GitHub earlier today. I think some there was an interesting question about how the tag can potentially work with the tab to get more user feedback for the particular area the tag are interested in. So I'm curious how to pursue that. And I'm, as you all know, I'm very new to tag as well. So I'm interested to kind of revise the chapter for a tag. And as part of that, I think getting the user feedback will be critical as well. Okay. Um, so I can answer some of that. Um, they yeah. just kicked off yesterday. Give them a hot minute. Um, <laughs> like, uh, the, like, I think this is probably going to be a conversation for Q1. Um, because yeah, to my knowledge, like the, their very first meeting was yesterday. But if you have things that you are directly interested in, like really specific things that you need feedback from, that would be a great thing to be able to kind of share with us and we can kind of start working out how that gets over to the end user tab. Uh, Ricardo, Dave, and Katie, I believe you all are our tab reps. Yeah, come on in. Or... Yeah. Oh. I'm not, I'm not a rep, but we did. Uh, I I'm in the tab tab, <laughs> but uh, in yeah, we had the first meeting yesterday. So as Amy said, uh, the effort will really start Q1. Uh, but any feedback, feel free to send it directly to to one of us, or or there is also a Slack channel for for the user tab that you can post there. So I think for right now, I would recommend folks posting in the end user tab Slack channel. That way all of the tab could potentially see it. I think it's better, yeah. Okay. Um, and then that way at least gets it on the tab radar to understand like these are active requests from tags to the tab to provide feedback in that mechanism. And hopefully they can have something put together before the end of Q1. Yeah, Thanks for the I'm thinking, um, you know, the, the, the yeah, the tab, you know, Slack channel. Yeah, if you can, if you post it there, Ricardo, it will be help, you know, people can draw it. Also the tab meetings, I think, you know, um, the tag, the tag chairs or leads can join there to discuss. I think that's a great question, you know, to link the, how we can link the tab with the tags, right? One is an user, you know, a feedback or 10 points, and the other is the tags that, you know, provide, could provide solution to solve them or could solicit any, projects, since a project, right, to coordinate and to solve those um, endpoints. So I think it will be good to open up. I think it's a, I think the tab is open, right, for people to join the meeting. Is it open? I thought it's only for end user, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I can I can check in a bit. I, I'm in the car now, so I can post, uh, <laughs> I, can, I can drop in the, the CC channel. It's hashtag TAB is the channel where that's at. Um, I don't have the details on the meetings, but it's definitely worth question in that channel to just verify from the source. Okay, thanks. Okay, anything else? Matt? 
Sorry, uh, does anybody else? I, did, I had a couple of recent things in addition that, that I, just, I was just reminded of. Um, out of the discussion around the potential for, you know, should this be a working group or, or you know, how might accessibility in general, not just for vision impaired, but um, mobility impairment, grossing you know, there's, there's a variety of, of types of accessibility. Um, uh, the discussion came up, what makes a good working group? And, and I know we have formalized criteria, but one interesting thing I, I thought that came out of that was the notion that as tags are, you know, where those these three demographics sort of come together and at points overlap, uh, you know, their intention is to pitch the working group uh, as something that can produce artifacts or outcomes that speak with the same information to those three different audiences in audience specific ways. So if you're a consumer looking to shop for cloud native stuff in the, in the CNCF to use in your organization, you might want to know what should I look for when assessing accessibility since I sell to government or um, uh, education uh, uh, large enterprises, just things like that, that have requirements around this. If I'm a project maintainer, what do I need to know so I can jumpstart things the right way and not have to reinvent how to, how to do what is an easy, straightforward, but fairly elaborate, you know, set, set of things to, to, to get certified or, or to at least understand where your gaps are and set yourself up for, for success. And then, for, you know, from the, you know, this is similarly for the, for the third group. Um, uh, so, I was curious what, if anybody else had had sort of not maybe criteria for what can be a working group, but what other things like that might make uh, sense to have as either aspirational or, you know, optional guidance to those that want to draft and, and, and create new working groups, you know, things to consider or, or other ways to make it as broadly applicable to the targeted audiences or tags. What do you think? That's a good question. I don't think anyone was expecting that question, Josh. Yeah. No, on. I wasn't expecting to ask it either. So I'll, I'll put it as food for thought and I'll see you guys on Slack. But uh, stuff to think about for the holidays. Uh, uh, I think I think accessibility, like like like, like Catherine and folks have, have, have launched, um, uh, it is an opportunity for the CNCF to differentiate itself um, uh, because commercial software <laughs> um, mm -hmm. is, is, is oftentimes way further behind and unable to address things because, you know, we're building things so fast we can build them right the right way. Yeah. Uh, first. So. Josh Gavant, you came off mute. Nah, I was just noting that the parallel of what you said earlier, Emily, that we want tags to take responsibility for those working groups early on and then delegate them, uh, yeah. help them get started and bootstrap them. It sounds like something that's worth collecting some of those uh, successes with working groups and placing that in the tag resources area, since I know that we are likely to have more working groups in the future underneath of tags, and it would be beneficial for um, the next group to understand what expectations are, how to get started, bootstrapping a lot of that, staffing expectations associated with those leadership positions. Um, so if you do have some of that information, I know Catherine Paganini, you've had a lot of success with working groups within Tag Contributor Strategy. I know your insights would be valuable there. I know that there's a few other tags that have great working groups as well. Let's move the discussion over onto the TOC discussions in our repo. Matt, if you would post it. Um, yes, I can. I can. I can capture that. Uh, I'm doing a bunch of updates, like three or four, to the discussions board following KubeCon um, between reInvent KubeCon and Life. Uh, Thank you. Later. Sure. Awesome. If anyone's interested, hit right. um, me up, and we can collaborate on the initial talks. So. Yep. Catherine said that she is happy to assist. Excellent. All right. So I think this was good. We got a lot of good feedback. We got some changes and some recommendations, not too terrible. Um, next meeting, like I said, is the TOC sandbox reviews. Um, so tags, if you have a chance, please take a look at them, provide a comment um, around the project in the context of the CNCF, whether or not you would recommend it, if there's more work that needs to be done, something along those lines. It just helps the TOC make those decisions. Um, also annual reviews are extended through January 1st, I believe, yep. Um, so if you have any questions on annual reviews, reach out to your TOC liaisons. And I think that's about it. 
I don't talk to you all before the end of the year, have a lovely end of year and enjoy your holidays. Please take some vacation, some time off, including from open source and CNCF Slack. I think we all kind of deserve a break this year. We've gotten a lot done, but there's a lot more to come in 2024. Thanks so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, all. Bye. Bye.